Next up, Jane Fillon is going to tell you all about NPSI fleets, what they are, what they're about, and how to get involved. All right, so I think uh, we won't waste any more time. We'll get you directly into the next uh, presentation. So please welcome on stage, Jane Fillon. Okay, I'd like to, before I get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Spectre Fleet and everyone on Twitch chat who helped uh, perpetuate such a stupid nickname as Doughboy. So let's get right into it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, quick presentation overview. Uh, this is going to be quick, past uh, NPSI, what's happening right now, and what's going to happen in the future, post FEEB, and past that. I'm also going to spend a lot of time sharing anecdotes, things that uh, the normal NBSI pilots you know, wouldn't have experienced, something that's unique to NPSI fleets. So let's get right into it. Now, I once told that uh, every good presentation has to start with a definition, so uh, here we go. This actually isn't my definition. This is right off the EVE wiki itself, surprisingly enough, and it's an engagement policy where basically we shoot everyone. We don't have friends, we don't have enemies, we just have targets. Or as I like to call NPSI, it's the only PvP playstyle. So, now what do I mean by that? Let's take a look. Here we have a nice bar of less PvP to more PvP. And we have an RDS on less PvP up to NPSI, again, the only true PvP playstyle. In under NRDS, the uh, most common one right now is Providence. It's been NRDS for as long as I've been playing. But it's also had uh, outcroppings in NPC Nullsec, Great Wildlands, I believe, was uh, NRDS, as well as there was an experiment that happened in Geminit. But beyond that, NRDS, not very a common playstyle, but valid if you don't like shooting things. Uh, NBSI is, of course, the vast majority of Nullsec, as well as Lowsec, uh, with the <laughs> various hot drops and bat phones that you can call. I pretty much consider that NBSI, even though I'm sure I'll offend a lot of Lowsec pirates by including you in that. Then we have, of course, NPSI, with the temporary coalitions. So, for example, hey, you want to meet up and we'll go shoot this one third guy? Yeah, that counts. We have the public fleets, and then we have the live events, whether they're player or CCP hosted. Now, let's uh, take a look at what these actually mean. Of course, we're just going to simplify this just so I can make my point a little bit more. If blue, don't shoot. And let's simplify it a little bit more. And this is what I'm talking about, the only PvP playstyle. NPSI is the only type of playstyle that will not tell you you can't shoot that because our EVE is a PvP game, so we're not trying to stop you from doing anything. We're just giving you the most amount of targets, the most amount of content. That's why I consider NPSI the only PvP playstyle in EVE. But jokes aside, let's get more into it. So disclaimer, some of this presentation, some, not all, uh, was published in an article for the Mitanni.com, of which I am a writer, on September 5th. So I'm going to be doing a very brief overview of what was covered during that article. And if you would like more information, I urge you to go check out that article. It's got links, videos, and a much more in-depth explanation of the history of NPSI. Uh, this presentation comes from a PV per uh, PvP perspective. I am a PvP pilot. It's the only thing I've done in-game. So for you industrialists, you logisticians, uh, I understand that you play a completely different EVE from me. And uh, I'm not saying it's an invalid playstyle. I'm just saying mine's more fun. <laughs> And this is the only time I'll ever admit it, but there are limitations to what NPSI can accomplish. We're not going to be able to conquer 13 regions like somebody has, but we're going to have quite a bit of fun doing so. Uh, so just a little bit of my background since we're talking about it. Uh, I am a new player. I am a very long shot away from being a better vet. I joined in the early months of 2012, and for those of you from Goonswarm will remember something else happened uh, early 2012, and that was Bernjita. So that was the first burn Jita, and at that point in time, I was only three weeks into the game, and I had just gotten my first mission running Hawk. Yes, I was very proud of that Hawk. I was running level two security missions in that Hawk, and little old me didn't know what burn Jita was, and when I undocked from Jita in my shiny new Hawk that I was so proud of, somebody ganked me. Who ganks a Hawk? I don't know, but somebody did. And that set, it, set me on my path. After that, I pretty much had a vendetta against anyone in Goons. And I took out my Merlin, because I could no longer afford another Hawk, and started trying to gank any pod I saw. And of course, this was long before I realized what security mechanics were, Concord was. 
So every time I would shoot one of these guys, I would explode and be like, damn, these guys are good at PvP. <laughs> so I go to Jita, get myself a new Merlin, and I was so focused on becoming a better PvPer, like, these guys are good. Like, they don't know I'm here, and they're still blowing me up. And time and time again, I would undock and try and shoot the first goon in sight. And eventually I realized that I was getting blown up before I was even finding a goon. So, by the time this had gone on, over about the course of two days, I was at a negative 8.5 security status <laughs> three weeks into the game. So, determined not to let that beat me, I moved out to Syndicate, and I've been PvPing ever since. So, again, PvP's perspective, I got to level two security missions before I stopped being a Care Bear, but, uh, so, that's my history. Not saying it's the only history, but it's mine. Okay, so public fleets, that's what we're actually going to be talking about today. And uh, through my own definition, there are three types of public fleets that have actually existed in EVE. Now there's the uh, corporation-hosted NPSI fleets, and these are the, again, the earliest ones that existed. Uh, Agony Empire is the, uh, the forefront of this. These kind of fleets exist where a corporation uses their own resources, their own pilots, their own foundations to make these fleets exist. So you provide your links, you provide maybe Titan bridges, any of these resources, SRP, this is something that somebody else puts an effort into to actually form up. Now the vast majority of these that have existed in each history have been for the purpose of recruitment. Now these are usually time limited, they're not very popular because it's like, hey, run a fleet now, join us. So, like it's, so it's NPSI, but it's got a devious motive to actually try and recruit you into the NBSI playstyle. Uh, the next one is player-hosted events. These are irregular, but they're actually probably some of the most pure forms of NPSI. So with this, when we have things like uh, Kirith Kadachi's event, any of the Gajin's carriers, there's been a lot of events like this that uh, normally they start out as free-for-all, and then they turn into basically mass chaos, where basically you're like, hey, want to buddy up with me? Want to buddy up with me? And we'll just try and kill as many people as we possibly can. So with that, well, actually, uh, one of the greatest ones was the Theomachy event that was hosted by Repercussus of the Razor Alliance. That was just probably the greatest example of a player-hosted event I've ever seen, where it was a thousand players or something ridiculous like that, just going at it on the test server with CCP's help. So that is probably the purest form of NPSI in existence, but unfortunately it's often chaotic and definitely an irregular occurrence. And we come to the last, and in my opinion, the most important type of NPSI, and that's community-based NPSI fleets. So there are a few in existence, there are a few that have tried to flourish and failed, but uh, these are the most stable version of uh, NPSI fleets, or NPSI communities, rather. Instead of having a corporation that is having to invest effort into running an uh, organization like this, where instead of uh, accomplishing their own goals, for example, they have to take a day off, take two days off to actually run this community. A community-based NPSI group, basically they're only, the only thing that they do in EVE is run these public fleets. There are people who consider themselves NPSI, NPSI pilots who run them. The FCs, uh, the FCs of the community are volunteers. Everyone just happens to have enough interest to manage to make these fleets work uh, through community. So I've uh, highlighted this one line at the bottom, which is a very important line, and through all of my research and you know, experience with NPSI, to actually have a successful organization, you need to have trust, reputation, and popularity. Now, popularity is highlighted here because the, the actual communities that never achieved popularity are not going to be listed here. So there's uh, a few examples in history. For example, Hydra, uh, after winning the Alliance Tournament, started their own public fleet to try and give people a... Uh, interest or opportunity to experience true elite PvP with links and nano ships, accepting only about 10 people. It was a great idea, great concept. I wish it would have gone longer, but unfortunately the popularity wasn't there and it eventually faded into non-existence. So that red highlighting there is just to say there are many more NPSI communities that have existed throughout EVE, but I'm not going to be able to mention them because unfortunately they never made the cut. So the first NPSI group that actually started this occurred back in the early 2006 days with uh, Agony Empire. They based out of Syndicate, and their first goal was to try and teach new pilots how to PvP. So their, that was their objective. This is a corporation-hosted NPSI, the earliest of the earliest, and uh, that was their only job. Twelve people took on the first uh, fleet. Yep, 
and it was just an ad hoc curriculum. They did this for fun, and with it, they made a lot of waves. So, the uh, Azula Skoll, who was the, uh, he's now the X player, I guess, who ran the uh, Eve Ultras blog, had this to say about uh, the new play style happening in Syndicate. So I'll let you read this, but basically it says, just because we shoot you doesn't mean we don't like you. Now this was a very different approach to playing Eve. Now again, I'm a 2012 player, so I haven't experienced what the 2006 Eve was like, but this was a place where honor was a thing. You know, scamming was frowned upon by the community. So having this sort of thing where you shot somebody, but you did it without reason, that might have been something that was very revolutionary to Eve. So this play style and this statement here, if we engage without provocation, which we will, this doesn't mean we don't like you. That's a very, very important sentiment that we carry through even to today. Now, switching off from the corporation-hosted NPSI groups, we come to the first community-based fleet, which is based not out of a corporation, but of actually a forum group called Fail Heap Challenge. Uh, this was the first NPSI fleet without a tie to a specific corporation, and rather than trying to teach people like what Agony did, what they did was joke rooms. Everyone gets drunk, everyone goes out and dies, where basically the purpose is to go out there and try and gank somebody before you in turn get ganked, hence the name. So the fleets were very infrequent, they were organized based on the forum event, and yeah. So they were comedy roams again, and uh, this is where NPSI roams, or public fleets in general, got a bad name for themselves. They were usually disorganized, the FC usually didn't care if he was even sober enough to realize what the fleet was doing, but they were very, very popular and went on for something like four years. And then, of course, the Terminus stream happened. Now, those of you who are... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I see Mangali here laughing. <laughs> Those of you who are familiar with the Terminus stream, I'll just summarize this slide by highlighting the important parts. The Terminus stream, it is not known what use it has other than the destruction of ships. That's a very important part because this happened thanks to a certain member of Pandemic Legion. So F. Mercury here, I thought it would be funny. Instead of taking these people out for a nice roam in their shiny materials and vagabonds, for which there were dozens of pages on the forums extremely excited about this, instead, before they even reached Nullsec, warped them into this Terminus stream anomaly, which was known for being able to destroy rokes in second, even fully tanked rokes, and basically everyone died. He then, the survivors, who were not smart enough to go, hey, this FC isn't actually working in my best intentions, kept flying with him all the way to MTAC O, which was three jumps away, and died to a coordinated bomb run, which was also set up by F Mercury, or, or sorry, allegedly set up by F Mercury. <laughs> yeah, so the results were pretty, pretty immediate. Last gank night anyone attends, GG F Merc. That posted 30 seconds or something after the actual event occurred. And the response was at best, whoops, my bad. So this poster here, Andrea, hit it right on the button. It was indeed the last gank night that ever existed, which leads me to my next point, that NPSI communities survive on trust, reputation, and popularity. So we talked about population. This is reputation where, oh, gank night? Yeah, that would used to be fun. Now FCs just go out and get you killed, and nobody ever attended them. But all was not lost, and here we uh, bring in our hero of the uh, RVB ganked, Mangala Solaris. Hey, Mangala, yep, yep. Clap, clap, clap. So red versus blue, Mangala Solaris. So it was actually not Mangala's idea, sorry. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so RVB director Tim Pest, who had flown on these fleets before, didn't want to see this part of EVE history go away, die, fade into obscurity. So he approached Mangala and wanted to have RVB gank, or sorry, RVB adopt the event and host it so that this tradition could carry on. So Mangala Solaris has been working for years uh, keeping this going, and with the concept of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So they took the original concepts that ran with Gank Knight, and they turned it into themed drones where, although it was light-hearted and you expected death, you went out with the intent to have fun and that the FC wouldn't betray you, which I don't think you have yet after 120 fleets, so <laughs> more, more self-control than I have. <laughs> Okay, after this, we come to the first true channel-based NPSI community in EVE. This was a departure from the norm in so many ways I can't even begin to mention. 
So we have Vengeance Incorporated was the, uh, again, the corporation that supplied the pilots to create this channel-based community. And it was, of course, headed by the uh, now infamous and ex-pilot Templeman N. So with this, we departed from the Gank Night frequency, which ran once every few weeks, to the RVB Gank style frequency, where we ran every Saturday on themed and regularly scheduled roams, to where this channel ran fleets every day, sometimes multiple fleets a day. And one of my first fleets with Bombers Bar was actually a 40-hour continuous hell camp of head GP. So we had to go on from, yeah, this is nice, this is fun, we're going to go out and you know, have a good Saturday night, to, you know, you log in, you see if there's a fleet, and if not, and if you're an FC, you make one, and this is what you do in EVE. So this was the first major step into becoming actually an NPSI playstyle. Now the problem with what Bombers Bar did is Bombers Bar, well, flew bombers, and nobody enjoys fighting bombers. I'm not sure if you've uh, ever been bombed in NullSec, but you don't go, hey, good, that was fun, see you next week. It, you generally get pretty angry at the bombers. So this, of course, led to not a lot of people liking Bombers Bar, especially those people who we hunted regularly. So one of the uh, things that became popular was camping jump bridges. So you just sit there, cloaked, and then if an uh, Alliance person brought their freighter through, which has happened, we caught a Rhea through these, you know, all you do is you decloak, you kill the Rhea, and then you're happy, you got the shiny kill. But the Alliance that you're camping doesn't like you. And since you're NPSI and you have exactly nothing in terms of OPSEC, they will put spies into your fleet, they will bring smart bombing typhoons into your fleet, and if you're not careful, you'll start losing a lot of people. So this became a problem very quickly and has something that's plagued Bombers Bar specifically for its entire existence. So this is where uh, Bombers Bar has since gone through a decline, and this brings me to my third point, that NPSI communities survive on trust, reputation, and popularity. So Bombers Bar fell in the fact that they would, you know, open these fleets and sometimes they would get fleets of 40 to 50 people even during weekdays. But if you weren't sure if not everyone in that fleet was there for the right reasons, if they weren't there to actually have the fleet succeed, then you were suspicious of the people who wore the same color of purple as you did and NPSI inherently fell apart. So you have to have trust, reputation, and popularity for an NPSI community to succeed. And here we come to my child, Spectre Fleet. So it's run out of the uh, Sanctuary of Shadows Corporation, of which I am the CEO. And Sanctuary of Shadows is an interesting corporation. The original founders of this corp actually met within Bombers Bar. So it was originally formed by 12 FCs, and they were the only people in the corporation. And the corporation itself did nothing except for build up Spectre Fleet. So that was a necessary step because somebody always has to take the first step to actually start a community. But unlike the channel, or sorry, the corporation hosted uh, events like Agni, who has been running these NPSI fleets for close to a decade now, uh, we built this, we built the uh, Spectre fleet community up, and then we're like, you can do it on your own now. And we're finally at the point where Sanctuary of Shadows, although we have a lot of FCs and we participate uh, quite regularly, we are not actually, we can leave, we could depart and Spectre Fleet itself would continue on because it has become so large and we now have 65 active FCs that Spectre Fleet is not dependent on myself or my corporation to exist and that's something that I've been looking for, looking to build for a very long time. And again, this was a, another departure. Uh, Spectre Fleet itself came out of Bombers Bar in the fact that after flying bombers almost continuously for 15 months, it gets pretty boring. So what we started doing in Bombers Bar was these things called Sunday specials. So on Sundays, we would get into ships other than bombers, which ended up being cruisers, battleships. Often they were themed just like RVB Ganked was, and we would experiment. And on one of these events, we realized that uh, after, it was right after the T1 cruisers had been buffed, so that they were actually quite effective and quite cheap, we took it out during uh, GTACO when Test was living in Curse, and they had this huge brawl between probably 800 people and uh, Again, the Bombers Bar Sunday special at that point actually came up on top. We were the last guys on the field. It was at that point that we realized that people in an NPSI setting could fly cheap and uh, inex or inexpensive ships and still be effective on the battlefield. So this started the gears turning that, hey, we can do this. We don't have to try and do guerrilla warfare against these people. We can actually go out and fight these people and have a good time, something that happens a lot longer period than 10 seconds of anticipation, are the bombs going to hit? You can have these slug fests lasting an hour and everyone really enjoys it and everyone really learns. So we took that and we decided to basically put Spectre Fleet towards the goal of good fights. 
So we fly doctrines. We don't fly themes, well, sometimes, but uh, we don't fly kitchen sink. Kitchen sink is a taboo in Spectre fleet. You know, even if you're doing frigates, the frigates are all long points or they're all micro warp drives, obviously. But you're always going out with the purpose of winning, which is really nice. It's nice to see that a whole bunch of people can come together for the actual purpose of winning fights. And again, fights are the goals. We're not trying to go out there and disrupt an alliance's operation, which has led to our fleets most commonly heading after PvP-hungry organizations like Brave and all of the small gang roamers who live in Providence. So this has been a departure from the guerrilla warfare, but taking the channel-based aspects of Bombers Bar and the fact that we run fleets every single day. In fact, since, our, uh, since we were founded in January of this year, we have run uh, 690 fleets as of last Thursday. And uh, I just wanted to hammer home the point of what happens when you want to fight people versus what happens when they don't want to fight you. So just have a quick video here. So that video was from the uh, Red Moon Rising expansion, if I'm not wrong, when uh, there was an NRDS organization set up in Geminit. And they had some sort of security, but their policy was basically never to fight back. So what they're parroting there is a red jumped in from LOSEC into the region, and everyone freaks out and runs away. And as amusing as that might be, if you are the red and you're looking for content, that's not what you want. You don't want to, again, EVE is famous for its non-consensual PvP, but really what is quite in engaging and interesting is when you find another group that is actively trying to kill you and you're actively trying to kill them. That makes for interesting play style, that you're trying to best a person who's actively engaged in combat. Killing miners, killing care bears, it has brief spurts of amusement, but there's no true satisfaction, excuse me, no true satisfaction like engaging another fleet and besting them at one-on-one -on -one combat. Which, of course, leads me to what happens when you actually do find an enemy you want to fight. Things like this happen. <laughs> now, this screenshot is from the, uh, what's been dubbed the Storm of Camella uh, a few weeks ago, where Spectre Fleet took out 200 Hyperions and Pandemic Legion basically rose to the call. Now, this was from a post on Reddit where a, uh, a new player in Faction Warfare had jumped through this normally quiet gate and seen basically Pandemic Legion versus this swarm of ships with apparently no affiliation and just asked, what is going on? So <laughs> that's kind of fun. It's a, it happens in about half of the videos you look at from where Spectre Fleet's fighting people. At some point in local, uh, somebody from the other side will ask, who are we actually fighting here? So it's kind of fun. Okay, so I'm just going to go over other NPSI milestones that have occurred. I've just picked four. So the first 256-man fleet was occurred on the anniversary, or the 100th fleet of RV Ganked, and this was also the first time that capitals were used in an NPSI fleet. So again, props to Mangala for having set that up. That occurred in January of this year as well. After that, uh, there we go. Hack fleets were introduced uh, in April of this year. Uh, this again was a very, very, it was a departure from operation in the fact that from the very start, we had run uh, inexpensive ships so that people could continuously join these fleets. You know, if we run something like faction battleships, it reduces that person's monthly income quite severely. And even those with low income might not be able to participate. Now, we polled uh, the NPSI communities, got close to 800 responses, and 88% of everyone who flew NPSI was in favor of moving up from T1 ships to hacks with T2 Logi which of course led to our first fleet, which I believe was Eagles, if I'm not, yep, it was Eagles, 
and uh, there was a gigantic brawl against Providence in which there were something like 450 kills scored for the combined NPSI fleet. Uh, with the change of Creus for T2 ships being insured, uh, this is going to be only become more prevalent with NPSI being able to field heavier and heavier doctrines and actually you know, giving these large NPSI organizations truly a run for their money instead of the comedy fleets of 2006. Uh, May of this year, we had the first successful triage doctrine. So with the uh, RVB Gang 100, we flew capitals in a Pantheon format, which I believe was 13 capitals. And uh, in May of 2014, we had a wormhole group that was interested in trying to fly triage. So we set this up, and we actually managed to have some success. This is, of course, not the first time we dropped triage, because nobody's successful on their first time dropping triage. But in May 2014, we managed to do it, kill the enemy fleet, and get our triage out. So that was a huge milestone for us into actually seriously fielding capitals. Now, you might say, oh, my alliance does this all the time. But you have to remember that before this fleet goes up, you don't know who you're flying with, you don't know where they're from, you don't know if they're a spy, you don't know anything about these people's capabilities besides the fact that they want content. And you have to work together on the trust of the, that you trust everyone in the fleet is working towards the same goal, and that goal is victory. Okay, in October of 2014, I was not actually involved with this, which, Apex, I still hate you. Uh, first super kill. So an NPSI organization killed a super. I, I was actually in a different fight at the time when I heard the news. But nine people who had met through Spectre Fleet coordinated the destruction of a hell supercarrier. So I don't really have much to say beyond that besides nine people just trusted each other through meeting through Spectre Fleet and coordinated the destruction of a super. So that's a milestone. I'm not sure if we'll ever, we will ever see it again, but definitely giving those guys a shout out for that effort. Uh, now, the current state of NPSI. There's two major groups uh, that basically dominate the NPSI community. There's RVB Gangst that has been around for four, three years now, and uh, they do their weekly themed fleets with uh, guest FCs when it's not Mangala himself running them. These fleets are generally very, very massive. If a popular FC is running them, they can easily top out at 250. It's no longer a struggle for the NPSI communities to pull a 250-man fleet. This was novel during the RVB Gang 100. It was the first time that we'd ever capped out at full 256 people in a fleet. And then even then we had to do overflow. As we learned during RVB Gang 100, having two NPSI fleets doesn't exactly work. <laughs> Nobody has any idea who they're supposed to shoot and who they're not supposed to shoot, so the NPSI fleets more often than not end up fighting each other rather than anyone else on the field, which is hilarious, but not really useful. So, since then, we've basically been capping our fleets at 256, unfortunately, but uh, we come close to this number, if not hitting this number, almost every Saturday uh, with RBB Ganked. Now, when it's not Saturday, Spectre Fleet itself shuts down on Saturday. I agreed to this with Mang a long time ago, but uh, through Sunday through Friday, Spectre Fleet operates almost every single day. We don't schedule. If an FC is online, they can log in, they can put up a fleet, or if there's already a fleet, they can just join it. And, of course, if you're not... A <laughs> Greg, I was going to hate me for this, but even if you're in the Australian time zone, you can join uh, Redemption Roads, which allows us to basically cover the entire uh, time zone spectrum through US, EU, and Australian time zone. Now, Greg I was, is going to kick me in the shins if I don't mention this, but they don't only operate in Australian time zone, but they are the only NPSI community that does. So if you're an Aussie, sorry? Well worded. Well worded? Okay. No shin kicking? Thank you. Anyway, so what happens if you don't speak English? Well, we do have quite a uh, Russian population in Spectre Fleet, which, uh, shout out to them, and props for you guys for working through the English. But we also have, again, the Australian time zones, and we have German and Russian NPSI communities. I heard of the Russian one two weeks ago. I still don't know what their name is, probably because it's in Russian. But I have heard whispers that the Russians have set up an NPSI organization, as well as there's a quite large German NPSI organization, which I believe is called Style Gwalt. I probably murdered that pronunciation. Apologies. Can you pronounce that for me? I'm not even going to try. <laughs> so what does this actually mean for EVE after the development of like eight years of NPSI slowly growing? And really it's that NPSI has become a profession just like mining or incursion running has been. So it's gotten to the point where you can sign in with the express goal of just doing NPSI that day. You don't have to have anything planned. You can play your entire EVE career just through these NPSI fleets, just like a person in an NBSI corporation or alliance would. This has become a very, very popular way to play EVE on a whole. 
This is from a uh, forum post from Greg Al, of which uh, probably put into words everything that I want to say. That uh, is why we fly NPSI and what benefit people can get from NPSI. And I'll summarize that NPSI allows people who might not have the, uh, I guess, uh, desire to join one of these corporations that requires a lot of obligation, API checks or anything like this, to experience fleet combat. You know, they can get their first taste. Is this something I actually enjoy? And if, it, if they like it, it gives them opportunities to explore what it is to scout, what it is to logi anchor, what it is to, if they really want to go so far, become an FC. So this allows people a very, very easy roadmap to get into the higher level of PvP activity. Again, we're not hosting a theme park where somebody hops in and joins our fleet for the ride where all of the important positions are filled by, for example, my corporation. It's not I'm the FC, uh, you know, one of my corporation members is the, uh, the backup FC, it's not one of my guys doing scouts, it's not one of my guys doing Logi Anchor. Every single position is filled from strangers filling these fleets and it gives people the opportunity and encourages them to learn and experience different parts of PvP in EVE. Just give you a second to read that slide. So again, three main factors have uh, made NPSI popular, and I want to stress one of these in particular, and that's the uh, barrier to content. Now, um, you've all seen the uh, slide, I believe it's Penny Arcade, where they're talking about joining a guild in WoW, and it's like, hey, you like to stab things? I like to stab things. Let's stab things. That's pretty much what it is, is in every other game. Whereas EVE, it's like blood samples, you know, history checks, like what did you do with your neighbor last night? Whereas that can be quite intimidating for people or provide a barrier to the content that these people actually want to play. So with this low barrier to entry, I want to think about how long it takes you to get into a fleet right now. Do you have to wait for a ping on Jabber? Do you have to set up a fleet? Like Laztel was talking about during his yesterday, or yesterday's presentation, do you have to log in the day before to make bookmarks? Do you have to log in two hours before to start forming the fleet? When I log in, if I want to join a fleet, it's two carrier strokes. I press the key X and I press the key enter and I receive a fleet invite. I might not know what's happening, but I'll be told and I can start a fleet immediately. That barrier to content, whereas EVE is notorious for its long periods of play, five, six hours, with Spectre Fleet, it allows you to join a fleet immediately with shortening the amount of time that it takes to get into the content, which of course allows for more time actually fighting and enjoying the game. The other thing with MPSI is that there's a lack of obligation. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything at all. The only membership requirement to be a part of these communities is being able to type in the channel name and join the channel itself. There's no SRP, there's no minimum SP. People will always find something to do, even if you're still on trial. They are always welcome to have frigates. And, you know, some people, I've, I've been trying to talk to people and have been like, oh, you know, you should come hang out in Spectre Fleet. And they're like, oh, I don't actually want to run a fleet. You don't have to. I'm not going to force you, I'm not going to find you and kick you out of the channel if you're not running fleets with us. Spectre Fleet, more than actually being a place to run fleets out of, has become a central point for hangouts, uh, where people who are interested in PvP or just want to talk to a group that's interested in PvP can hang out in the channel, talk about the latest balances, what it's going to affect for solo PvP, fleet PvP, all of this. So if you're watching on stream right now, I highly encourage you to check out these channels, RVB Ganked, Spectre Fleet, and just say hello. And I'm going to say hi because I know Spectre Fleet's watching right now. So. Uh, again, yeah, the time to content. So again, the content is actually enjoyable. So there's no logistics moving the ships. You know, we generally uh, stage, pardon me, out of trade hubs so that, you know, you might, again, if you live in a trade hub, you log in, you exit up, the fleet is, you can buy your ship immediately and just catch up with the fleet. So that's, you know, nobody would fly if it wasn't actually enjoyable. Just like Scion said in his presentation from Eve Down Under, uh, the game is about fun, but more than fun, it's about relationships. So between that, the actual content, and the community in the channel is why NPSI has become so popular. So just some statistics. This is a uh, word map uh, after, I think it's 2,700 responses. Uh, we, to keep track of how we're doing, after every fleet, we have a FC feedback form which we link, and people can provide us uh, feedback on you know, how the fleet went, what they liked, what they didn't like, and specifically what these FCs, most importantly junior FCs, can do to get better. Uh, as a person who's learning, the, the hardest part of getting better is not knowing what you're doing wrong. And uh, it, we have a command channel where all of the FCs you know, join and talk to each other, and the, the feedback doesn't go specific to that FC. 
it goes to everyone, and everyone reads it. And if a senior FC or somebody who has more experience sees that a junior FC is having difficulty, you know, they can go to them and be like, hey, I saw you had trouble on that fleet, like what happened? And can coach them into getting better. So this is adding to that sense of community where, yeah, you don't, you're not expected to be the best. You know, MPSI has for a long time been under the uh, understanding that, you know, we don't expect to succeed, but we're very, very proud and happy when we do. And that just contributes to that. So another fun stat that I like to pull out is that we, uh, we poll people, did you enjoy the fleet? And so far we have a 97% success rate on people enjoying our fleets, even when we die. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share, I think it's four anecdotes from NPSI and hopefully more if I have time, which I don't think I will. So the first I want to share is our experience with Titans. Now, this picture is from somewhere in Catch, where I honestly can't remember. But uh, this was with a fight, after a fight against Brave, where uh, on, we were all happy because we had uh, just defeated a Brave fleet in uh, really silly fit ruptures without prop mods. You laugh, it's really fun. But uh, after that, when we jumped into a system, my scout called Sino up, and I said, where? And he said, I don't know. And I go, okay, well, can you tell me more? He's like, no, it's literally in the middle of space. What's on D-Scan? A saber. And me, having just come off of a very successful fleet and being 30 jumps into Nullsec, said, what could go wrong? And fleet warped my fleet to the Sino. In which case, NC Dot dropped a whole bunch of Titans on us and tried to smart bomb our fleet. And they would have been successful if our Ruptures hadn't been silly and fitted, not a prop mod, but an extra large shield extender. Now, beyond this and me freaking out and trying to warp out the fleet before we all died, I later realized that this was the, probably the first experience that a lot of my NPSI pilots had had with actually seeing a Titan. It was something that a lot of them <laughs> you still talk to me about. Do you remember that, uh, the time that we got smart bombed by Titans? It was the first time I saw it, and I'm like, they're so cool. You know, this is one of the magical mysteries of EVE, where we take a pilot who maybe has never left high sec before, take them out in an environment where they can experience the deeper mysteries of EVE. Uh, one of the other times, I believe there's one other. Oh, yes. Yeah, I forgot about this. <laughs> uh, one of the other fleets we did. <laughs> this, I, I, I'm going to say now, it, there is a recording of this. Do not look it up unless you want to bleed from your ears. It is terrible. But at, this was actually on the fleet. Again, a, another example of what could go wrong. We, uh, we had formed, I think, 150 interceptors in what I had dubbed the uh, death by a thousand cuts. And the idea was basically that we would uh, hyperspatial velocity modifier rig our interceptors and try and do a 400 jump route full circle of null sec, just because we could. You know, we don't have any objectives like NBSI groups do. We're just going, like, okay, guys, we're going to bash this tower. No, it's like, what are we going to do today? Let's explore null sec in interceptors. That sounds like fun. So we got like, I think, 30 jumps into the uh, roam itself before we caught and killed six carriers with 150 interceptors. So that pretty much spelled the end of that and everyone just wanted to go die. So we flew over to Declan and just started messing around with Ishtars until, again, they tried to smart bomb us with Titans on a gate at first, which was really cool. And then after fighting around and realized that they had formed way more than we could have handled, because don't bring Lokis if you want a fun fight against interceptors. But uh, yeah, convoed their FC and was like, hey, can we get a Titan bridge back? And it started the most hilarious exchange between our two groups about having to sing for a Titan bridge back, which again, you know, these people who join NBSI are generally not experienced pilots. A lot of the people on this fleet, out of our 150, that was the first time that they'd ever seen a Titan or taken a bridge. So this is, again, trying to get people to experience parts of EVE that they probably wouldn't have seen otherwise. And again, shout out to the Big Red Boat, and I'm going to kick myself not around, but I believe it was Asher who uh, provided this bridge. It was? Thank you. Okay, next, Eve Lauren Roleplay. This takes me to the uh, Provost event with the Chimeras and the Wyvern. Uh, Spectre Fleet knows exactly what I'm about to talk about, but uh, Elise Randolph of Pandemic Legion, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure why, I'm pretty sure he was just trying to provoke people into being even angry at Pandemic Legion, which is quite a challenging task, I must admit, uh, decided that he would start to go into roleplay and post on the forums that he was supporting the Provosts in a post like this. It was saying, basically, why are you guys sticking around Kaldari space? You could sh we own Sov. We will protect you. You know, you promised. Come and join us. And for the last event of this uh, uh, CCP-built live event, Spectre Fleet decided to, okay, you're going to play the roleplay game? We're going to play the roleplay game. And the last event was known to be in high sec because it was going to be the Wyvern, and, of course, Pandemic Legion would have spoiled all the fun if it was in low sec. 
no offense, Pandemic Legion. So Spectre Fleet decided to take up the mantle, and being in high sec, you know, our objective is not to kill a supercarrier, especially not one that was just given to us on a silver platter. So we started thinking, what could we do? This is high sec. So eventually we uh, formed a fleet of 100, 100 mega newton bumping Omen Navy issues and attempted to save the Wyvern, which turned out to be a lot of fun. Uh, there were two hicks out of the 700 players or something that showed up to this event. There were only two player hicks. And between our 100 Omen Navy issues, our 100 mega newton, 100 mega newton micro warp drive nomens, uh, those hicks were quickly flung 100 kilometers away. So these, these ships would go at 14 kilometers per second, and we ended up moving the Wyvern itself away from the player blob while they were focused on killing the supporting chimeras 430 kilometers away. Freed it of uh, newts, freed it of hicks, and we're yelling in local Kosenjaika, who again was the uh, NPC role player for this wyvern, jump out, jump out. And although he didn't, in, <laughs> in spirit of the actual event, we knew that we had succeeded in our goal. And to everyone's great glee, it actually got us included in a dev blog of the event afterwards, where Spectre Fleet got a mention. Despite Karada's praise, a group, of, a group of unaffiliated capsuleers calling themselves Spectre Fleet attempted to offer aid to the province, but it ultimately proved futile. We consider this as now Spectre Fleet being canon in the EVE universe, and anyone who tells me otherwise can shh, go away. But uh, <laughs> this was actually really interesting. Just like Titans and being the uh, first time that these people had seen Titans, these people who might have been into EVE for probably, you know, two months maybe, got an introduction to the roleplay side of EVE through a PvP and PSI fleet. So I thought this was really cool, and this has made me want to pursue providing these different opportunities to people who join my fleets. One of the most memorable to me is that people were talking in Spectre fleet at one point, it was uh, a long time ago, not a long time ago, earlier this year, about the uh, hell camp that was during a zero tech W778, I believe. It was when goons were trying to dead zone a station. And they were talking about it. I was like, why talk about it? It's out there. Let's go find it. So I formed a fleet of everyone who was talking about it, and we went out and we tried to break this hell camp. And I just, just demonstrated to them how effective this could be with their roaming interceptor gangs, their sentry assigned uh, bubble dominixes on the station. And it really just put it into perspective that these things, you know, we have news sites. We have Matani.com, we have Eve News 24, we have Crossing Zebras. And these people discuss these events, but you can be very dissociated from what these things are happening. And I took these people out and I showed them this is actually occurring. You know, this is not just something you read about. You can get involved about this. You can actually see what's happening. So I've been trying to do that as much as I possibly can. Now, this is sort of a self-indulgence that I want to talk about. And uh, shout out to Tricky Dutch, who actually <laughs> got this included in the slideshow. But this is the story of us trying to learn how to use triage, which, of course, leads to a lot of lost mails. This was a test pilot who decided that, you know, I just want to use my triage carrier. It's been sitting in my station. I don't want it collecting dust. I want to use it. So, as you can see there, he dropped it into Amamake, which was probably not the greatest of ideas. He died pretty, pretty severely. I don't remember what exactly was on his kill mail, but it was a lot of capitals. It was pretty funny talking to them afterwards. They thought we were a Black, a black Legion trap, so they, they refrained from dropping supers, but dropped a very large amount of dreads on them and killed them. Once they'd realized that it was a public fleet that they had just brutally massacred, they invited us back for round two, which I personally have seen and managed to, again, this is very strange for an NPSI community to do, but I rage, I rage formed in 30 minutes 100 Vexor Navy issues with Chimera support, and we went back again to Amamake. And this time, Pandemic Legion, and props to you guys for this, brought art ruptures to fight our Vexor Navy issues, and we had a great brawl. Uh, Spectre Fleet was actually going to win this fight until they decided to drop Dreads again and kill our Chimera so that it was going to be a more even fight. But everyone had fun. Spectre Fleet absolutely loved being able to shoot Pandemic Legion and actually kill one of them for once. So everyone had a lot of fun, and I think Pandemic Legion, despite you guys not wanting to fly cruisers because of clone costs, cough, cough, CCP, uh, thank you very much for uh, entertaining the NPSI guys. I like the in that fight. <laughs> Yeah, there's one poor guy who I think killed four times in that fight, so. <laughs> so the next time we did it, after this joint uh, uh, 
more guys from Pandemic Legion realized what Spectre was doing, uh, we had a few people from Pandemic Legion start flying with Spectre Fleet and teaching us how to do triage, which ended up with this fight in which we baited out seven Providence Capitals. Uh, Pandemic Legion guys were helping us, you know, talking about how we needed to do things. And for a lot of our guys who had no experience, really learned how to run a proper capital op. So we dropped, we baited out Providence, and then the combined Pandemic Legion and Spectre Fleet forces demolished Provi Block for the tune of 25 billion -isk. Unfortunately, Tricky, once again, died. I don't, Tricky has a knack for doing that. I don't know how. Which brings me to the last event of the whole Spectre Fleet loves Pandemic Legion sort of thing with this fight. Again, the Storm of Camilla, in which we had formed air, our largest fleet intended to run with triage ever, which was something crazy like 180 battleships. We had brought Hyperions, Nuding Geddens, Nuding Dominic Nixes, and it was a pretty scary fleet. And we had formed in Camilla. Camilla was our staging system. And uh, it wasn't long before Shadow Cartel showed up in. Uh, I think it was rattlesnakes with chimera support, and I think they underestimated just the amount of newts we had. We got a warp into zero and pretty much killed them in a minute before they could start de-aggressing. And then the call went out that uh, there was this giant fleet just wanting a fight, and Pandemic Legion once again answered the call. This time, after some dancing around and some unfortunate disconnects from the FCs, uh, we fought on the gate, and their T3s, they had brought a uh, armor T3 gang, uh, fought us on the gate. We dropped triage, they escalated with triage, and we started probably one of the most fun brawls I've ever had. And there's a reason there's not a carrier lost mail shown here, and instead there's a picture of us off the station. It's because Tricky, for once in his damn Eve career, managed to escape. So, so against Pandemic Legion, we managed to drop triage, and using what they had taught us, we killed two of their triage, we lost two triage of our own, but Tricky Dutch, who was on field, managed to survive, which again, a lot of fun and means that we had actually learned something. And again, thank you to Pandemic Legion for providing us that opportunity. So can NPSI learn from NPSI? Uh, I'm just gonna cut that short and say, yes, we have fun. And you have to remember that fighting can be the goal. That's all I'm gonna say. I could, this slide could go on forever, but opportunity to comment, simplify things, make sure that you're doing things because you enjoy it and make sure you're doing it so that you and your pilots uh, can learn and get better at the game. Just three main points. PvP can be the goal. It doesn't have to be in the pursuit of something more. PvP in the game is very, very well designed and it's a very, very enjoyable thing to participate in. So remember that. PvP can be the goal in EVE. Now, this gets complicated because I prepared this before the FEB announcements, and honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> you know, there's a, there's a ton of things that could happen. One of the things that I've always been dreaming about is just like uh, Providence has an NRDS region, I've wanted to free port a region for NPSI. I think that's a long, long, long ways away if it's even possible at all. But with new NPSI communities cropping up, you know, my imagination is limited. Maybe somebody else, else out there will come up with a brand new idea of what they can do next just by trusting the people that they choose to fly purple with. Uh, this is going to be my only plug for the presentation of improvements that would benefit social groups. So. A lot of these will benefit groups like NPSI, but I'm sure there's a lot on these lists that could actually benefit NPSI groups as well. So community calendars, fittings, just ways to easily communicate with a group of non-aligned pilots. We don't fly under the same corp, alliance, faction, anything like that, but we group together to fight people. So I'm not gonna go over each and one every one of these lists. This list is actually pulled from a forum post that Mangala Solaris is running on the EVE, on, or the Eve official forums. So if you're interested in uh, any of these suggested benefits, uh, go on the forums, either support them or suggest your own and help us make that a reality. Uh, summary. That's about it. Maybe if PvP is the only goal, we've reached what we can do and just enjoy, having the enjoy playing the game, experiencing new things. And I'll just open it up for questions. Yep. Uh, is, if PvP is the goal, how do you like? How do you make money to to buy the ships to, to do the PVP? 
So yes, how do you actually make the money itself? So there's a few ways that we do this. Um, again, insurance is a very, very big part of uh, why we fly T1 ships is that it's very easy to insure. You know, you can have hours of fun in a T1 cruiser and only lose probably 10 million isk, which, you know, over the course of time is quite easy to support yourself. Uh, the way that we actually make money uh, is through donations, uh, as well as picking up the loot of shiny kills, which, you know, there's been a few times where we've killed faction battleship roams or very, very pimped out tengus, and whenever we make money like that uh, on a roam, the loot itself is distributed to the FC, the FC sells the loot and then replaces as many ships lost during the fleet as possible. So we, we definitely recognize that everyone is uh, putting their trust in the FC as well as, you know, saying, I'm going to put this much ISK on the line, show me a good time. And, and we recognize that. We recognize that people are, you know, trusting us and we do our best to try and reduce the financial burden on those who might not be as well off as some of us. Also, if I want to, if I'm a new player, uh, the only thing that I want to do is PVP, like Spectre, Fuse, Spectre Fleet is like a public uh, thing, but it's also like a corporation or... Now, the thing with corporations is you don't really know uh, what, like, especially when you're new to the game, you don't know what you want to do. Uh, Spectre Fleet itself, the beauty of it is that it provides opportunities for you to try out everything from low sec PvP, faction warfare, null sec, bombing, black ops. You can experience a lot of these things. Corporations are usually goal focused, where they go after things like structures or maybe faction warfare or who knows what. And when you're a new player, I don't think you have the knowledge of the game to actually know what you're going to enjoy. So that's where I think NPSI really has its strengths. Great, okay, thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> oh, hi, Muffy. What, hi. Are you going to ask what, a stupid question? I am going to ask a stupid question. Okay, but go I'm ahead. doing it for everybody else because I think it'll help you out. What is your public channel so that they can join your fleets? Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. So these are the uh, three largest, again, uh, NPSI communities in EVE right now. Mangal Solaris running RVP Ganked, who's also a CSM9 member. Uh, myself, I run Spectre Fleet, and Gregel, who is about to ask me another stupid question, uh, runs Redemption Road. So if you're interested, again, more about NPSI, EVE Online official forums, uh, Crossing Zebras has another great article series written by Mangal himself, as well as the Matani.com, of which I am a writer for. Go ahead, Gregel. Honest. We're not going to give you too hard a Okay. <laughs> I promised Mangel I'd be nice. Um, now, a serious question, then. With the changes of Phoebe, potentially actually meaning that the big blue donut and all may actually break up, and those NPCs, you know, those sovereign groups may actually create content for their own members, do you believe that this may impact the ability for us in the NPSI community to continue to attract players to us since so many of the regulars are? Null seckers who have nothing to do at home in their own corporations and alliances. Yeah, Phoebe uh, has the great potential to actually reducing the popularity of NPSI, and that's for a few reasons. Um, hopefully, with Phoebe and the resulting changes, we're going to see the more balkanized uh, EVE Null Sec, where these smaller groups can actually you know, go out and stake their own claim, which I'm really excited for. But uh, if these people who fly NPSI you know, find something else that they're interested in and that they can accomplish on their own with their own name, then power to them. I'm not here to build up Spectre Fleet to be the greatest thing it ever was. I'm not uh, upset. But isn't it already? <laughs> I'm not upset when people leave. If two people, for example, meet within Spectre Fleet and they decide that they would enjoy flying in a corp together, or if they meet the CEO of a corporation who lives in Paragon Soul, for example, and that they join that corp and enjoy that, I'm, I'm proud of being able to be the catalyst that allowed these players to find the place in EVE that they're going to enjoy. So yes, if uh, NPSI does reduce in popularity with Phoebe, I hope it's for the best. I do think it's going to create a lot more um, targets for us, at least I sure hope so. Definitely more small gang PvP. Yeah, that I definitely hope so. Thank you. And uh, nicely done. Thank you. <laughs>